Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Montgomery County Council has approved a resolution aimed at increasing voter participation and improving election practices. And as Susan Kennedy reports, the measure has caught the attention of officials from across the region. <laughs> A host of county and state officials and the mayor of the District of Columbia all came to Rockville to stand firm in their position for equal voting rights for all. It calls on Congress to propose an amendment to the U.S. Constitution that would grant an individual right to vote. A resolution introduced by Council President Nancy Navarro was the impetus for this week's event. That measure calls for Congress to restore Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that was recently declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Court. Surrounded by supporters, Navarro stressed the need for robust federal enforcement of election law. The free and fair elections are the foundation of our democracy. As elected officials, our job should be to encourage civic participation and community engagement. But in some states, we have seen a disturbing trend of more barriers to voting. Navarro hopes the resolution will be a catalyst for offering innovative proposals that can be adopted at the state and federal level as well. There are those who think it's all right to try to depress uh, the, the voting rights uh, of people in this country, particularly targeting on minority communities. And, and Nancy, you're right. The state of Maryland's taking steps to make it easier rather than more difficult for people to vote. It is absolutely shameful that in this democracy of ours, some people would try to win at the ballot box, not by expanding participation in elections, but by trying to limit people's participation in elections. Navarro's resolution also urges changes at the local level. The local level is actually where the rubber meets the road. Montgomery County Board of Elections is now in the process of selecting up to four new early voting sites. I sent a letter to the Board of Elections a couple of months ago re to request that they select sites that are accessible by public transportation. And this led me to suggest to my colleagues that we should look at a broader set of voting rights issues and how Montgomery County can play a leading role for progressive reforms. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. It's election season for some of our county's biggest municipalities. In Rockville, there are four council members and the mayor's seat all up for election on November 5th. Our Rockville 11's Bridget Suiso joins us now with more. Bridget? That's right. It happens every two years, election season in the city of Rockville. And this year, there are three questions voters are being asked to weigh in on, which could change the city's charter. This year, voters will decide between two candidates for mayor and six candidates for four council seats. They will also be asked to vote on three advisory referendum questions related to the elections law in Rockville. This came about as a result of a review of the city charter by the Charter Review Commission. Three advisory referendum questions will appear on the November 5th ballot, asking voters to respond with a response of yes, no, or no opinion. Number one, in the city of Rockville, the term of office for the mayor and the council members is currently two years. Do you favor increasing the term from two years to four years? Number two, city of Rockville elections are currently held every two years in odd numbered years. Do you favor moving the city elections to be held every four years to coincide with the presidential election? Number three, the city of Rockville is currently governed by a mayor and four council members. Do you favor increasing the membership of the Rockville mayor and council to a mayor and six council members? Rockville operates under a council manager form of government. Under this form of government, the five member elected mayor and council is responsible for establishing policy, passing local laws and developing an overall vision for the city. Here's a look at the candidates running for city council this year. Council members Bridget Newton and Mark Prashela are running for mayor. Six candidates are running for four council seats, and they are Beryl L. Feinberg, Donald H. Don Hadley, Tom Moore, Virginia Onley, Julie Polakovich Carr, Claire Marcuccio Whitaker. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For polling locations, special transportation options, and other election information, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash election 13. Keep it on Rockville 11 for the most news on the city election, including candidate statements, debates, and results.
The three incumbents in the upcoming city of Gaithersburg election are running for re-election unopposed. Mayor Sidney Katz and city council members Henry Maratha and Michael Sesma are the only candidates who filed to run in the November 5th race. All three candidates are seeking to retain their current elected positions. The last time there was an uncontested election in Gaithersburg was back in 1982. New state traffic laws go into effect on October 1st, and drivers caught talking on a handheld cell phone behind the wheel will face hefty fines. Lorna Virgili talked to police to find out more about the implications of the new law. Lorna? Sonia, if you're driving with your cell phone on your hand, whether you're checking emails, texting, uh, talking on the phone, or just using your GPS, guess what? Police officers can now stop you and give you an $83 citation. Beginning October 1st, a driver may not use a handheld telephone while the vehicle is in motion. If they do so, it becomes what's called a primary offense. The officer sees them talking on the cell phone while they're driving down the road. They can immediately pull them over. The first offense is $83, the second one's $140, and the third offense is $160. After that, every subsequent violation will be $160. Using a handheld cell phone while driving is already illegal in Maryland, but officers could not stop a driver just for using the phone. The driver had to commit another traffic violation. Now authorities are encouraging the use of listening devices, but headsets are not allowed. People are allowed to use Bluetooth and they're encouraged to um, if they have to talk on the cell phone. Um, when you use a Bluetooth, you make sure you only get a single ear Bluetooth because you can't use the headsets to cover both ears. Another part of Maryland law prevents you from covering both ears when you're driving down the road. Distracted driving is the number one cause for crashes in Montgomery County, and it is estimated that the use of cell phones is a major contributor. Another law that goes into effect is the use of seat belts for all occupants in a vehicle. Although it is a secondary enforcement and police would have to see another violation before pulling over a driver, it too grants a citation of $83 per occupant not wearing the seatbelt. All people in all positions have to wear their seatbelts and the change is adults must wear their seatbelts in the back seat too. Texting continues to be a primary offense. Montgomery police will be holding checkpoints throughout the county during the month of October. But as a reminder, these are new state laws and will be enforced all over Maryland. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. If you've always wanted to start a new business, then you may want to climb aboard the Startup Maryland bus and pitch your idea. Pitch Across Maryland is a three-week bus tour that is crisscrossing the state in celebration of entrepreneurship. The Startup Maryland bus made its first Montgomery County stop at Bethesda Green. We invite entrepreneurs onto the bus to pitch their business because nobody tells a story like the entrepreneur themselves. Their passion really sells it. We give them two to four minutes to pitch their idea or their company in their own words, and then we promise them two things. We'll take their story back with us, and when we leave, it doesn't end there. We do a competition for several months after the tour, highlighting and celebrating the stories of these entrepreneurs. Robert Snyder is the incubator manager at Bethesda Green, and he said the tour attracted a diverse group. They were all really interesting. I mean, they, some of them were service companies, some of them a builder. We had a, a restaurant uh, app company. We had a lawn company, uh, tremendous uh, diversity of companies. The entrepreneurs practiced their pitches as a group before boarding the bus to tape their videos. My goal is actually to take it national. You know, it's one day at a time, and hopefully with the Startup Maryland competition, as well as other competitions we're in, uh, we can get the right funding and really get our feet off the ground. There's a lot of resources here. There is a lot of people that are willing to help. I think that the community is great, and uh, if you're an entrepreneur, I don't think that there's a better place to be than Maryland. When we started and did the first tour, we had 30 companies that were registered and involved with Startup Maryland. That was about a year ago. Now we have over 600. The really important thing about Startup Maryland is that we're entrepreneurial. It's not an organization. It's not government. We are supported. We do solicit sponsorships, but we're entrepreneurs that are trying to help other entrepreneurs and connect that ecosystem. And so uh, we do whatever entrepreneurs need to, to, to help their business. 
You can find out more about the Startup Maryland competition on its website at startupmaryland.org. When we come back, we'll tell you how Montgomery County Public School students are performing on the SATs. And we'll take you to a local equality rally. Stay with us. County Report This Week is coming right back. Silver Spring is going green. It's the second annual Silver Spring Green Fest, Saturday, October 5th, from 10 to 5 at Veterans Plaza in downtown Silver Spring. It's rain or shine, and admission is free. So come for the festival, the friends, the fun, and see how you can green your home, green your business, and green your life. It's the Silver Spring Green Fest, Saturday, October 5th, from 10 to 5 at Veterans Plaza in downtown Silver Spring. Silver Spring is going green. And after school, the chess couple. Wake up, kids. I am interrupting your morning announcements to let you know that Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union is proud to be sponsoring the Gazette's My Favorite Teacher Contest. Nominate your favorite teacher online for a chance to win an iPad. That's awesome. All Montgomery County K-12 students, visit favoriteacher.net by October 7th for your chance to win. Who are you going to nominate? I can't wait to get home and nominate my favorite teacher. Yeah, me too. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. SAT scores were released nationally last week, and Montgomery County Public School students continued their strong performance on the test. MCPS-TV has more. MCPS students continue to earn strong results on the SAT. With a combined average score of 1648, the MCPS class of 2013 significantly outperformed their state and national peers on the college entrance exam. The district's SAT performance was solid across all racial groups. African American and Hispanic graduates surpassed their peers in the state and the nation. Overall, 69% of graduates took the SAT. It's important that our schools are committed to making sure that our students not only have access to those exams, but also that they're well prepared for those exams so that it will open those doors to higher education for them. MCPS also showed tremendous growth in the SAT participation and performance among students who receive free and reduced priced meals, an indicator of poverty. More than 48% of 2013 MCPS graduates that received farms took the SAT and earned an average score of 1382. That is an increase of 22 points compared with the class of 2012. MCPS schools have used numerous strategies to get these outstanding results. Several high schools saw significant increases in their scores and participation. At Montgomery Blair High School, scores rose 18 points over the previous year. At Clarksburg High, scores rose 15 points. But here at Rockville High School, scores went up by 57 points, the largest increase in the district. The staff at Rockville credit that success to many factors. Being here at Rockville, I believe our success has been because of our kids, our students' interest in being successful for themselves. So it was a combined effort between the SAT committee, between administration, between the counseling. It was really a school effort. Students at Rockville and across the district believe that their teachers, counselors, and administrators provide them with the support and resources they need to be successful on the test, in school, and beyond. I would say Rockville definitely cares about our success. They actually watch us succeed and become successful in the not only college but the workplace after college. What I really like about Rockville High School is that they do offer a lot of help. The teachers are really helpful. These high scores are a key indicator that MCPS is on the right path in preparing all of its students to be college and career ready. The Maryland chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, in partnership with the Equality for Eid Coalition, are encouraging Montgomery County students and staff to stay home on October 15th to support the celebration of the Muslim holiday Eid al-Adha. A rally for this effort was recently held on the front steps of the County Council office building. American Muslims in Montgomery County have been struggling for over a decade to have this initiative passed. As the size of the community grows and grows, more and more families are affected every year. As they struggle to decide whether to send their children to school or whether to keep them home 
and have them miss time from school in order to observe the holiday with their families. We want to emphasize that we're not asking for special rights for Montgomery County Public School students and teachers. We're only asking for equal rights. So on October 15th, Eid al-Adha, the Muslim community will keep its children home. And let me tell you, many other faith communities, including Pax Christi from the Catholic community, Jews United for Justice, and others, have joined together in solidarity with this movement because it is a question of basic fairness and basic equality. Our First Amendment protects the right freely to observe religion. And having school open on a religious high holy day like Eid al-Adha poses a conflict for those who wish to observe their faith. And that's why, although I am not Muslim, on October 15th, I will be keeping my son home to express my solidarity and my support for this movement. Supporters of this effort say they have found at least six school districts in the U.S. that close for the Muslim holiday. A Montgomery County Public School spokesperson tells us they cannot close schools for religious reasons. It must be for operational reasons. MCPS students are allowed to take an excused absence on religious holidays. International Walk to School Day is fast approaching, and the county is encouraging residents to organize an event or participate in one in their community. Thousands of students, parents, and community members throughout Montgomery County celebrate this day by walking or biking to school. This year's Walk to School Day is Wednesday, October 9th. Last year, 47 schools participated. Pedestrian safety is a top priority for Montgomery County officials, but recent stats indicate accidents are on the rise, specifically in parking lots. Joining us in the studio today is Captain Tom Didone from the Montgomery County Police Department to tell us more about this trend and what you should know to make sure you don't become a statistic. Captain? Pedestrian collisions are important because every time a car and a pedestrian come in contact, the pedestrian always loses and becomes injured. Parking lots have been raised to a higher tension because we've identified that people are driving distracted. We've had over 12 people killed in Montgomery County this year in pedestrian crashes and several of them have occurred in parking lots. It's really important that we make sure that you don't drive distracted. Everybody has a responsibility to look out for each other. So whether you're driving or walking crossing the road, please look out for each other and pay attention. Thank you, Captain, for that valuable information. Thank you. Still to come on County Report this week, we'll tell you about an event that highlights the importance of service and partnerships. And then we're off to Montgomery College for a fall sports preview. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Corporate Volunteer Council of Montgomery County recently hosted a partnerships discussion entitled The Cycle of Service. The event featured presentations about the changing demographics and needs of Montgomery County residents and included a panel discussion with representatives from a wider circle, Impact Silver Spring, and the Montgomery Coalition for Adult English Literacy. This panel was just terrific. We heard about our demographic changes and the challenges that that brings to all of us who live here in Montgomery County. The fact that so many of our neighbors are living behind closed doors in poverty and need. And the fact that there are so many people wanting to give back and to 
to try to help the situation. I thought it was very inspiring. You know, you, you hear a lot about Montgomery County being this, this affluent or, um, location and the schools are so wonderful and great, but you don't hear the other side of it about the, the poverty and the people that, that need housing, that need clothing, that need just people to go out and mentor with them. So it was really a, a great opportunity to see the other side of what's happening in Montgomery County. One of the most moving moments featured a personal story from a resident whose life was transformed thanks to the collaboration between area businesses and nonprofits. You know, everybody can make a difference and uh, everybody should make a difference and put in some time with some of these organizations or if people don't have time, give money uh, or talent uh, to uh, these great organizations in the county uh, like Impact Silver Spring, like uh, the Montgomery County Coalition for Adult English Literacy, like a wider circle and many other nonprofits in our county that are doing great work uh, to really change people's lives. If you want more information about some opportunities about making a difference in our county, visit the MontgomeryServes.org website and mark your calendars for October 26th. That's Community Service Day. Congratulations are in order for Montgomery County's Recreation Department Director, Gabriel Albernoz, who has received the National Football League's Hispanic Heritage Leadership Award. Albernoz was recognized on stage during a star-studded 26th Annual Hispanic Heritage Award Ceremony at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. And he was recognized at FedEx Field during the Washington Redskins game versus the Detroit Lions. The start of the fall semester at Montgomery College means MC athletes are back in action, and MCTV's Michael Brown has a report. The fall sports season is underway at Montgomery College as men's and women's soccer and the volleyball team are all back in action. Head coach Pedro Braz's men's soccer team has picked up right where it left off last season. Deprived of a national championship last fall by a disputed goal, so far this year they're playing like a team on a mission. They've roared out of the gate with a 9-1 record, ranked number two in the country and number one in Maryland Juco. It's been an explosive and dominating start. Among their wins are a 7-0 shredding of Tidewater and a 17-1 pasting of Springfield Tech. They have a multitude of offensive weapons. Mohamed Olari, Javier Nieto, Gabriel Dai, Michael Buscemi, and Caio Fonseca are all threats as they've already scored 58 goals as a team and the aggressive defense has been stifling, permitting just nine goals in 10 matches. And while there's a lot of season left, at this point it's clear that MC men's soccer has the look of a hungry team with something to prove. MC women's soccer got off to a slow start this year, but it appears they're beginning to turn things around. In the early going, they lost two starters to season-ending injuries, and the offense struggled to score. The injuries forced head coach Brad Harton to try players in unfamiliar positions as he searched for the right combinations. But those moves are starting to pay off as they've taken three out of their last five matches, including an upset of Division I Dean College on the road in Massachusetts. And the scoring has really picked up as Tamara Castillo, Anna Corden, and Rachel Anderson have begun to find their form. So with their stout defense finally rewarded with some offensive support, Things are really looking up with more than half the season yet to play. And finally, turning to volleyball, head coach Amir Mafinajad lost a lot of talent to graduation and suspects that this season might be a rebuilding one. He's got four solid returners, but he's had to introduce a large contingent of inexperienced freshmen into the mix. This team plays hard, but early season results reflect the inexperience. But again, it's early. And Mathena Jod's track record at MC is that his teams always improve as the season goes on. And with 16 matches to go, there's plenty of time for history to repeat itself. From Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown for County Report This Week. Coming up on County Report This Week, we'll introduce you to our Pet of the Week. And we have some green news. County Report This Week continues. It's not too late to register for late starting classes at Montgomery College. There's a wide variety of subjects to choose from and some classes begin as late as November. You can register online or at any of our three campuses. 
MC is the Red Cross Greater Chesapeake and Potomac Blood Region's 2013 College of the Year. MC was honored for holding blood drives organized by the Rockville Campus Office of Student Life and for a 30% increase in blood donations in the last year alone. And MC has been named to the 2014 Military Friendly Schools List by Victory Media. The list honors the top 20% of colleges and universities that assist service members, vets, and spouses. MC was selected for its recruitment and retention strategies that support students with military experience. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. It's time to meet our pet of the week. Let's go to Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society, who's going to introduce us to a guinea pig who needs a good home. Kathy? Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society, and we're here with a very special little guinea pig. He's tricolored. He's about three years old. Now, his name here is Fufu. Feel free to change that, because I don't think I'd call this little guy Fufu, but he's a nice guy. And he's actually a good example of maybe how some people should be a little bit more responsible pet owners. Fufu was here through no fault of his own. He was a good guinea pig, he was very happy in his family, but his previous owner decided to get a second dog. And after she got the second dog, the second dog seemed to be maybe a little bit too interested in Fufu, or it was maybe a little bit too much for her to handle. So she decided to put Fufu here at the shelter, so where we are desperately looking for a home for him, because he's a nice guy. He's just about three. As you can see, he's tricolor, he's very pretty. And the nice thing about guinea pigs is they're very low maintenance pets. They only require about four square feet per guinea pig. They don't need a wheel like hamsters or rats do, so they don't squeak all night. Night. They're not even particularly nocturnal. They like to stay awake during the day and sleep during the night. And they're good company for kids who will be, can be taught not to squeeze them too hard. But they are nice, nice pets. And although he's three, the lifespan of the average guinea pig is about 10 to 12 years old. So he's got another good few years to go. Remember that. Every time you're interested in an animal, always consider adoption first. Come to the shelter in Rockville off Rothgedge Drive or give us a call at 240-773-5967 or you can visit us on the web at mcumaine.org. You can see a selection of all the animals we have here and they're all looking for a home with you. So always remember to consider adoption first. Promoting sustainability is what Bethesda Green is all about, and this year the nonprofit is celebrating its fifth anniversary in Montgomery County. Uh, reaching our fifth year anniversary, we have uh, many diverse programs. The incubator is, of course, a big part of it, but uh, other things that we do are involved with the business and uh, the community and helping to promote sustainability there. So we do internship fairs, we promote uh, recycling and uh, energy conservation, and we have new programs that we're rolling out all the time. Tickets for the October 3rd Gala are now on sale online. For more information, visit BethesdaGreen.com. And there's more green news to share. That's right, mark your calendars for the Silver Spring Green Fest on October 5th. Downtown Silver Spring is going green and hosting environmentally themed vendors, activities, games, and educational opportunities. The Green Fest is a free, fun filled day for the whole family. It'll take place at Veterans Plaza starting at 10 a.m. on the 5th. With Silver Spring being as diverse as it is in many ways, one of our main goals is to reach out to all parts of the community, especially folks that have not traditionally been involved in the environmental movement to find ways to meet their goals and the goals of sustainability. At the Green Fest, this event provides an opportunity to have a big splash so a lot of folks know what we're doing and what other people are doing, what other companies, nonprofits are doing in the area. There'll be a speaker series with some nationally known speakers from environmental organizations. There'll be panel discussions on local solutions, what folks are doing locally to make Silver Spring more sustainable. We'll have green businesses selling their products and promoting their products. We have programs that go on throughout the year. This is a chance to actually bring everyone together that we work with and have a, a bigger presence so folks can really find out what's happening. To find out more information, go to mygreenmontgomery.org. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report This Week. Remember, we want to hear from you, and we invite you to join the opinion forum at engage.montgomerycountymd.gov. 
We also want you to like us on Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.